Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is the Off Grid Workshop. This week we've got an Adria Sonic in here and we've changed the install a little bit from what we did previously where previously we had two Fogstar 300s in this install. Now we've gone for two Fogstar 460s and found a really good place to put them. So I'm going to take you through what we've done here. All right, so here's where most of the equipment is. So we've got the Servo GX with the switch that I mentioned before. So we power, as you can see here, through these Wagos. So we're drawing power for the actual servo itself. And then the cables that we've run for power for the screen, we've put onto the same circuit here. And that all runs through this switch. So if we need a power cycle, the servo and the screen, if it's frozen or for whatever reason, you can just get the customer to flick the switch rather than unplugging the plug and then trying to get it in the right holes here and stuff like that. So that's the servo all set up. Got it set up on VRM so we can do remote support for the customer if need be. Uh, but obviously they can also monitor the system from uh, over the internet through VRM as well. We've got the Orion XS here as well, so that's wired into uh, the engine battery. We always, always run new wires for these. We pretty much never piggyback on existing wiring. We find it much more effective. The little bit of time that you save doing that sometimes can lead to more issues and troubleshooting and stuff like that. So uh, we've just always found to wire in the Orion XS directly. The other thing as well, which some people overlook, is we always have a, a dedicated chassis ground for the system. So we'll obviously have the Orion, as you can see here, the wire goes around to this bus bar post here, but then we have a, a, a 16 mil dedicated chassis ground for the Orion XS on the system as well. So we don't just rely on the van's chassis ground. So we don't just have like the Orion XS connected to one of the two batteries because in some vans, the chassis ground on the system is too small and you actually don't have enough for the current that's uh, being carried. So it's very important to make sure that you have that chassis ground. So obviously because it's isolated, it shares the chassis, but you definitely want the black cable, the negative, the ground going from here to either of your battery's negative terminals. And then you want an additional cable if you're going from the leisure system from the negative terminal on the leisure system to the chassis. So you make sure it's ground correctly to the chassis. And then we've got a smart solar MPPT 15035. So there's quite a big solar string on the roof. We've got five panels on there. So we've gone for one that has a higher voltage to cater for that. We've also wired them in series for now. Uh, may swap it if we get additional solar panels, but we've put as much solar as we can, leaving the middle of the roof available for Truma to fit an aircon unit. So I've uh, got the MPVT in there. Multiplus is wired into the consumer unit, which is just here. This is one of the better Adrias to work on as far as the consumer unit goes because it's quite accessible. Sometimes they put them in really difficult to get to places. We've also left the Nord Electronica um, B2B in here as well. So we've, our experience is that these work fine alongside the Orion XS. So this will effectively give you a true sort of 50 amp of charge while you're driving, uh, even taking into consideration that the fridge is using about 15 amps while you're driving of that. So looking pretty good. Up here we have the servo screen, obviously uh, no grid connection, no solar and no alternator right now just because everything's off. Uh, but we've gone through, tested everything, everything's running, it's connected to VRM. This is a really nice place to mount these screens on the Adria Sonic because this is just a void behind here. So if I loop around to this side, you can actually see there's a panel that comes off the back here, which gives you good accessibility. Sometimes you just have to move stuff around when you're drilling the holes through, which is what we've done here. So that this white bus bar system, we actually took off the wall, cut the holes for the screen, mounted the screen, and then put it back on slightly, uh, moved it so that um, we could get everything in there. And then obviously fed the wires for the screen down. There's a channel that runs down the back here. Now, that channel is almost impossible to get a, a fish through if you just push it directly because inevitably it lands up getting caught on wires and things like that. But the method that we take is we do it in stages. So we'll drop it from here. We'll take like the cover off one of those plug sockets there and we'll get it to that point and then we'll jump from there to the ne next plug socket, which might be down here or to the switch here and then go to the next one and then ultimately underneath the fridge into the false floor and then run the wires along the false floor. So that's the best method that we've found to be able to get 
wiring run down that channel. Um, fridge is isolated from the inverter, so the auto selection will still continue to work. So currently it's on gas. If we uh, plug in the electric hookup, it'll switch over to that. So that's all integrated and working. And down here is where the old batteries used to go. Uh, so that's just now a beer locker, I imagine. Uh, run the wires around here and then back around to uh, where the bus bars are. And back here is where we've put the MultiPlus. So it fits really nicely in there, just below the level of these runners for the draw. Works perfectly. All the weight is bearing down on this board that we've mounted the MultiPlus to. It's a bit fiddly to get in here because you have to wire everything, close the cover up, turn it on, and then mount it. Uh, so accessibility in terms of troubleshooting if there are any issues is a bit of a pain. You'd have to pull it out. But we leave enough slack on the wires down there to be able to do that. And once the drawers are in, you don't see it. It also sh shields it from sound a bit. And there's quite a lot of room under here for ventilation, big ducts and uh, space for air to move underneath the floor here, which is good. And here is where we have got the batteries now. So this, when you lift this, is a big drawer that goes into the garage. And so we took the drawer out, took the runners out, and we've been able to get both 460 batteries in here. So we've mounted them on the Folkstar battery trays, got the shunt over here. When we ran the wires for the 230, 230 volt um, and the uh, wires for connecting those bus bars to the batteries, we uh, ran a, a trickle charge for that we wired into the shunt and onto the MultiPlus. So we can read the engine battery voltage on the shunt and trickle charge from the MultiPlus. And then we obviously also ran a V direct so we could connect the shunt to the servo. So pretty pleased with how that's turned out. Fits perfectly in here. And it's a good use of space central as well. So um, we've also been able to take the cover off the back of the drawer and put that on so it's neat from the garage side as well. So we'll show you that now. All right, and here's the garage side. So this is the drawer that we took out. And as I said, we took the face off the drawer and been able to clip it on here. So it closes that off and looks pretty good from the garage side so to hide the batteries and to keep them safe. And here is the roof. So we've got one, two, three, four, 500 watts of solar. Left a big gap here where Truma are gonna be fitting the aircon unit. And so the main reason why the customer is getting Truma to fit it is that a lot of motorhome manufacturers will only let Truma cut a new hole for an aircon unit. So in this motorhome, because there's no 400 mil skylight here or there, a new hole has to be cut. And uh, most motorhome manufacturers, there's just a handful of people that they'll allow to do that and still honor their warranties and things. So Truma are going to be doing that. So we've left enough space for the aircon unit to go there. Once that's done, we'll probably be able to squeeze in potentially another one panel if need be, but customer's going to see how he gets on with this and uh, take it from there. So yeah, pretty pleased with how that all turned out. There we go, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing that. And if you have any questions or if you have a similar van that you want to uh, talk to us about, then reach out. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Cheers.